Okay, so now let's get ready to get this thing in the air. So John, show us how to get her all ready. Well, it's always a good idea before you go flying. There's just a few basic things you probably ought to check. Um, it could avoid any uh, bad things happening. Um, one thing is to make sure that your battery's fully charged. Um, you can run it across the charger and it'll tell you that, or you might have a kind of an inexpensive battery checker like this, and it'll uh, count out the cells, three cells, and then give you a fuel style gauge to tell you that uh, just under 90%, which is okay for this. Um, another thing you probably ought to check, and I speak from experience on this, don't assume that when you mounted your props that they're all just going to stay tight forever. Uh, there's a fair amount of vibration that could be going on depending on how tight your uh, machine is put together. And also uh, the notorious hanger rash, you know, you carry it out of the garage or the house and load it up in the truck. Um, so just make sure your props are tight. Um, make sure all your connections, you know, nothing's gotten uh, loosened up or is creeping backwards. And then uh, for us, we just use the hook and loop, slip a battery in. I got a little block wedge I used to tension that battery up even more. Some, some real high tech here. And then we're ready to fire up the transmitter. As everybody knows, you always turn your transmitter on first. So I'm flying this on a, on a Spectrum system, uh, 9503. 2.4 gigahertz. Make sure you have the right model selected. Don't leave that to chance. Could be interesting. And then you can hot it up. So now this flight controller is a KK2 board from Hobby King. And most flight controllers, they power up in what they call a safe mode. So the throttle does nothing. And that's a good thing because if you had your throttle armed and uh, gotten away one of these props even though they're, they're pretty soft pliable plastic they do a number on your hands so uh, yeah it tells you that I'm in safe mode and we're ready to arm the uh, motors and we do that by putting the two sticks together the LCD says armed and we can we can fire that thing up then this KK2 board if you drop the throttle you can manually safe it off or if you don't touch the stick for a few minutes, it'll uh, it automatically safe itself off. We're ready to fly. Okay, now that we're getting ready to fly, let's take a closer look at the transmitter and what these controls do. John, what can you tell us? Well, this is just your standard everyday uh, RC transmitter. Um, it's a nice one, but it's probably way overkill for what this little this multi rotor needs. Uh, you don't need a very advanced transmitter to fly one of these. Um, you can set up dual rates, so you can have two different sets of. Uh, um, rates as far as how aggressively the, 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 the aircraft's going to respond to your inputs. Um, one good feature that really pays off um, to use is if your radio has a countdown timer because uh, I, I think I might have mentioned it, um, as these four ESCs and motors feed off that LiPo, that battery's going to drop to a certain point where potentially one ESC is going to give out or complain about that low voltage before the other ones. So when that happens, you lose one motor, well, the thing's going to flip and you're probably going to take home pieces and have to make some repairs. So if you've got a countdown timer, you know, start conservatively. I think I started with five minutes on this one. Then as you recharge your batteries, you can get a feel for, you know, how, how, how much further you can push that. So i got seven minutes now. That's a, that's a nice margin of safety for this, this particular heli. So the controls there, so which ones control the throttle, which ones control altitude, which controls... Anything else that the audience might be interested in? Pretty much, you're going to be using these two sticks to do all your fun stuff. Uh, this is your throttle, and um, if you picked up that beep on the camera, that automatically starts my countdown timer, so I don't have to worry about manually starting it. Uh, this is, um, if this was a helicopter, you'd call it the cyclic. Um, it's going to control the aircraft's position left to right and forward and back. I want it to go to the right, I push the stick to the right. I want it to go forward, I push the stick up. Um, and then your left stick, the uh, other quadrant left to right, is the rudder. Uh, we call it a rudder, but what it will actually do is make this, uh, this vehicle spin clockwise and counterclockwise, depending on which way you push it. So, um, yeah, you pretty much just use these. Okay, now the moment of truth. Okay, John, contact. Well, the first thing you probably want to do with your multi-rotor is hover it. Um, and keep in mind, you know, these things act a little bit funny when they're in what we call ground effect. So if you think you're going to come six inches off the ground and just kind of hold it there, there's a little bit of a cushion of air there and it kind of destabilizes the whole aircraft. You got to get up out of that for it to really get stable. So, you know, three feet or so, that's a better target instead of just trying to hover real close to the ground. So 
so spool it up, use the throttle up, coming up out of ground effect, and hopefully you can kind of see as we were coming up out of ground effect, it was a little bit uh, shaky down, down low to the ground. We got a wind doing about 7 to 10 off my back shoulder, but this aircraft's more than capable of handling that, it's not, a, it's not really a big deal.